I'm going to talk to you guys about how Elan fits into your business and why it's important for your business. And then the benefits of the Elan multi-zone audio over IP system uh, and, and how it's uh, different from what maybe other solutions that might be out there. And then we're going to walk you through the products themselves and help you figure out how to select the, the right products, go through uh, what it takes to order, part numbers and so forth. And then we'll do the Q&A at the end. So again, we'll, we'll go ahead and answer all the questions through the Q&A at the end. So um, you're looking for high quality multi-room distributed audio, but you know, what's, out, what's out there potentially is, is too limiting for, for your needs, or it may require too much work to, to get it installed, or in some cases, not always uh, super reliable uh, uh, for, for the uses that you're looking for. So why then is Elan uh, IP amplification the right choice? Why is multi-room audio from, from Elan the right choice to, to the business? So, some of the things that we're going to go through, we'll look at uh, some of the issues that you might have. So whole house audio installations might typically require long speaker cable runs to get from uh, remote locations back to the, the main amplifier. So if you have a, an outbuilding, for example, getting speaker cables back to the main amplifier is, is kind of a chore. It's a lot of cabling and a lot of effort. With the alarm system, a single cable is going to route the audio between those devices. So you can have amplifiers placed remotely and sources placed remotely so that you can deliver audio to the, the main amplifier or the, or the system, really, not just the main amplifier necessarily, but the entire system over the, the existing network. And that, again, simplifies your cabling and simplifies your, uh, your installation time. Some audio over IP solutions might also require specialized network equipment. And so what that does, that makes the, the installation a little more complex for you guys. And so with our solution, We've made that a lot easier because our Alon IP amps use standard network switches. They don't require special configuration. Um, for, for most cases anyway, at least when you're, you know, a standard typical system, it's not going to require any special configuration. Literally just plug it into the network, configure it in Alon, and you're good to go. That's obviously going to save you a lot of time, and it's going to make your installations a lot easier. Another problem is, you know, audio sources don't always make sense to be located with the amplifier. You have a turntable, for example, or let's say you have someone who is uh, using a, an Apple TV or a Roku behind the TV, and they are, uh, the challenge has always been with those situations is getting the audio back to the rack or back to the amplifier. Um, so, you know, the Elan local audio source, this is a little device that we'll show you later, provides audio return for any device and plugs it into the network. And so you have the device anywhere you want it. Let's say you have a turntable, for example, you plug the, you plug the turntable into this device, this device goes into the network and you're ready to go. Uh, you have uh, audio re, you know, all, over the, all over the property using this little device. And it uses PoE, which is even better because that makes it just one single cable to do power, uh, uh, audio routing and network. Another thing that we, that we see as an issue uh, in, in, in installations is how do you expand when, when needs change over time? They might want to, you know, your customers might want to add a TV down the line or might want to add another source. Let's say they do, they buy a turntable down the line. And to get that in there under a typical system would be really difficult. You'd have to run audio lines back. Uh, how do you route those? Um, becomes, uh, you know, becomes kind of com complex and problematic. So the Elan solution, really can be expanded over time. If you need more amplifiers, you can put that amplifier wherever you want it. You plug it into the network, run speakers to it, and it's good to go. You're not disrupting the entire system. Same with sources. You can add sources as you need to, and you can, uh, you can um, uh, just plug those into the network, and, and you're ready to go. Very simple to do. Lastly, we see that a lot of whole house audio or IP solutions that use, uh, use the network for delivering audio use proprietary or unreliable protocols to deliver audio over the network. And with the Elan solution, when we, when we designed this, we, we wanted to choose a protocol that was, uh, was going to be robust and was going to be uh, proven and was going to work and was going to be easy to deploy. And so that's why we chose, we chose Dante Audio Networking to deliver that. And it delivers that in a reliable way. Uh, the audio is high quality and it's uncompressed and the latency is near zero. So we've chosen the right protocol. This is a, um, uh, we'll specifically talk about what Dante, for those of you that aren't familiar with Dante. Uh, Dante is uh, a multi-channel audio networking solution. It was developed by a company called Audinate. Um, they are, uh, you know, used by the world's leading professional audio manufacturers today. Uh, all the large companies use them in, in the commercial market. 
it's really it's really the standard for digital audio networking in, in commercial. It's not not been seen much in residential. We're seeing a little bit now uh, on our part and, and some others, but we are the first to bring it uh, in this way. And so, um, you know, Dante, the Dante networking uses standard IP networks that transmit the high quality audio. It's uncompressed, near zero latency as we talked. It's very flexible, very reliable, and it's super easy to manage. So. Uh, one thing to, to note that if you are familiar with Dante, we are not a standard Dante implementation. We don't necessarily interoperate or play with other Dante devices. We're just using it as the backbone because we know it's reliable and we know it works and we know it's easy and it's going to it's going to it's going to be uh, in place for a long time and work well. Um, so uh, Larry will talk a little bit more about that. I'm sure that'll be in, in some of the questions as well. So. Let's talk about what you know the benefits for for you and your customers and installers and why why uh, you know what's in it for you guys right so first thing is you know getting audio back to the rack we talked about that we've got a set top box or a turntable or some other device inside the house the local audio source uh, you know this is a little piece that I think is going to sell the entire system for you this is this is something that you should you know you should put a TV you know one of these behind every TV that's using a Roku or an Apple TV or some other other set top box. Um, this is this is sort of a little Trojan horse for you guys. Um, so the next thing is you know future proofing. Again, we talked about that as well. So lawn sources or amps can be placed anywhere later. Just plugs into the network. Super easy to install. Configure it with a lawn, and you're ready to go. Saving time during installation. That's something that's really important. I know to to everybody out here on this call. Uh, how do we save time when we're doing an installation? How do we save time, which means obviously saving money. Uh, of course, less cabling. Running less cables means less time. Uh, the cables themselves cost less um, and allows you to decentralize everything as you need to. You don't have to decentralize, but it allows you to do it if you need to or want to. Um, auto Discover, Elan Auto Discover, it makes this really easy. Uh, the devices come in just like any other Elan device. You, you plug them into the network, they show up in, in the Discovery tab in Elan. You click install and you're ready to go. You configure it, uh, configure your zones, and, and, and you're out the door. Very simple. And lastly, there's no special networking configuration required. Uh, when, you, when you set this up, you literally just plug it into the network. There are some things if you've got some larger systems that you may need to do, but it's pretty simple configuration. It's not like the, uh, you know, you don't need a special network uh, VLAN. You don't need any special switches. It's very easy to install, very easy to, to set up. So what's in you know what's in it for your customers? Well, a lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of larger homes out there are using a lawn, and they can really take use of, of a decentralized implementation. Zones that are physically separated, like a pool house or a detached garage or a guest house, you, know, you might want to make those part of the of the audio system or the, the you know the, the whole house system. But doing that is obviously particularly difficult, right? You got to run speaker cables between the between the zones or between the, the buildings. This, all you have to have is the same network, and you plug it into the network, and then you might have an amplifier in the detached garage or in the, in the guest house that feeds speakers in the guest house, but it connects to the network. And all sources on this whole system are available on that, on that amplifier through the network. Uh, again, talking about the primary source of TV, this is happening a lot, as you guys know, more and more. More people are ditching cable and using Apple TV or Roku as their main content source. Uh, this is perfect for that because, again, the challenge has been getting the audio back to the amps. This does that for you in an easy way. And when future-proofing, you know, alleviating the, the additional work that's going to be required to, to run cabling and things like that, uh, that will disrupt either the system itself or, or you've got to, you know, uh, run cabling in, in a disruptive way through the house also is alleviated here. You're not running things back to the main, the main rack. So the installation team, this is really important, uh, right? So if you've got um, installation teams that don't really need the burden of trying to figure everything out, right? We just, you know, it's just going to work. The, the, the Dante and Elan system, uh, it's just plug and play. It works when you're setting it up. There's no, there's no special knowledge required. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Dante, there is some special knowledge required to, to do a typical Dante implementation. Um, but not in this case. In this case, everything's done through the Elan configurator. We don't we don't use Dante uh, any any of the Dante devices or any of the Dante software to, to configure our stuff. It's all done through configurator and, 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 a, and a familiar way to you guys. Uh, so it's very easy to do uh, and very very intuitive and, and simple. 
So one thing I want to make sure that when you guys are selling this, that you're not talking about this as just an S86A or S1616A replacement. While those were, were, were good amplifiers in their day and they, and they served their purposes, um, this is a whole new generation of, of products for a lawn. Uh, you know, there's a lot more that these things deliver. You'll see this list coming up in just a second, but they're more powerful. Lip sync corrections available, five band EQ, IP control, discrete digital inputs, got Dante Adder networking. It's really flexible in the installation possibilities. Your installation costs are going to be lower. The little local audio source that really sets the system aside uses standard networking and near zero latency. So these are a whole new generation of amplifiers and, and components that really will, will, uh, will do a much better job than what we had prior to this. So we're really excited about this stuff, right? So we are, as a company, really excited to see this in the market. Hopefully you guys are too, and, and uh, you, can, you can do really well with these amps. So I'm gonna uh, just go through the five, the five SKUs real quick, and I'm gonna turn it over to Larry and have him go through all the different, um, the different ins and outs and, and, and the details on the, on the technical side of the products. And uh, so the first, uh, the first thing here is that the five SKUs, we have the multi-zone audio matrix. This is the, the chassis that we've been selling now for the past about month and a half. It's in the market now. So, uh, people have been very happy with it so far, um, using it in standalone mode. And then we have the multi-zone audio extender, and that is the piece that connects to the Dante network once you've, once you've uh, made the multi-zone audio matrix uh, Dante enabled. And that becomes the extender amp for the, either the, uh, the preamp audio matrix, which is the next one, which can be a Dante enabled. And again, Larry's gonna talk to you in more detail about these. Uh, and then we have the local audio source, which is the little device that you connect uh, a source to and, and deliver the audio over the network. And then we have the network audio card, and that is the, the Dante card and the Dante audio networking card that is swapped out for the standard network card in the multi-zone audio matrix or the multi-zone preamp audio matrix to give those two uh, uh, chassis the Dante functionality. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Larry and let him go through the different, uh, the different devices in more detail. Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm Larry uh, from Nortec Security Control, and uh, I'm going to go over each of these chassis with you in detail. Uh, but uh, just keep in mind, uh, towards the end of this month, there will be a specific technical focus webinar that will go over the uh, the configuration of these devices and all, all that uh, fun stuff uh, towards the end of the month. So look out for an invitation to that. All right, so we're going to start with the uh, MTX-8 channel. Uh, as Jeff has said, this one is actually released uh, today, and uh, we're using it in what we call single chassis form. And that's what's great about uh, this chassis and, and also the, the, the preamp chassis is uh, it comes pre-installed with that, with that RJ45 card, and you can use it completely uh, in a single chassis format where you don't need any additional parts or, or cards. They'll just uh, function a, a, as a single chassis device. Um, it does have the card so that it can be compatible with the, uh, our audio over IP implementation as well. And that does, again, allow you to grow with the system. This is capable of going up to uh, 12 individual audio zones and up to 13 inputs. Now, we'll talk about the uh, inputs and outputs uh, just in a few slides here. Uh, on the speaker connections here, uh, one thing's important is uh, the power. So these are rated at 80 watts per channel at 8 ohms. They are four ohm compatible, and they're rated at 100 watts per channel for each of these. Now, each of these amps also has a five band EQ, uh, which you'll see an image of that and how that looks. They do feature lip sync correction on each of the output channels. Now that's up to 400 milliseconds uh, of power. So now we get to the next chassis here. is the amp ext so the one thing you'll see on this chassis is there is no inputs this is just the output section basically it's the same output section as the mtx uh, eight channel now the idea here is a lot of systems have a lot more outputs than they do inputs so when you run out of outputs instead of needing a whole chassis for sources you may not require you can uh, you can add these outputs to a system now on the output section, this is again just like the the uh, MTX8 channel. Those are 80 watt per channel, 8 ohm, and uh, also 100 watt per channel at 4 ohm. Uh, this is a you know, audio over IP only device, right? Since it has no sources without 
um, another audio over IP enabled device, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. So it is uh, this is a specific product to using that audio over IP. The next chassis is the pre MSI. Now we had you know numerous requests over the years for another preamp only chassis. The last one we had was a variant of the S eighty six P, which goes back many years. So we wanted to fill that, and, when, and this is how we're doing it with uh, with this product, the pre MSI. So this product, like the MTX, can also be used in a single chassis form, right? So it does ship with that uh, RG forty five card. So this is a card based chassis uh, for the uh, for the networking, uh, and it is compatible with the extension card to make it audio over IP. So it can be used in either in either way. Uh, it will go up to 12 zones. Um, you know, again, it depends how you configure those zones. Uh, there is 12 outputs, but we'll cover the outputs in a second. And all the uh, the basic functionality for the uh, for the lip sync correction in the 5 band EQ is, is the same here. And I think now we're going to get uh, into the pre SSI. Now, this is the, the box Jeff's been talking about, and it's a, you know, it's a solution to the device. Uh, it provides a local audio source. Now, what's really great about this is if you ever, you know, have a fully loaded chassis in the field and you need one more source, uh, well, you could just add one of these, right? So again, getting that expandability and that flexibility uh, to meet those needs. So um, this again is a uh, runs on the local area network, so it does it does require that. And this is our networked audio card, right? So this is is the card that allows the both uh, the preamp box, the uh, preamp SI, and the MTX box, MTX eight channel, to use audio over IP to enable it to have audio over IP. And this is just a card that would swap in for the factory card um, that that uh, that is single chassis operation. This is the five band equalizer. So this is a first for us. Uh, these boxes have uh, a lot of uh, audio characteristics to them. And uh, we put the five band EQ, this is uh, end user facing. So you have a five band EQ. Um, you also have six preset curves that are genre specific that, uh, that, we, that we made that uh, complements our speakers. And of course you can uh, create your own curves uh, within this platform. So now we're going to get uh, we get to see the front and the back. And I think the first thing we're going to talk a little bit about is these uh, status indicator lights. And I know it doesn't sound um, important or anything, but uh, having two lights that are that are tri-colored means that we can give greater granularity on what's going on. This is uh, this is good for function and uh, in troubleshooting. Uh, there is a whole matrix chart of what these do, uh, what these lights indicate to you, and that'll be uh, covered in the technical training. <clears throat> and now as we get to the uh, the back side, well, let's go over the inputs, uh, the input section. So right here, we've got our digital inputs. We have two coaxial and two optical inputs. Now these are uh, four unique inputs. So this isn't two and pick which one. This is four unique inputs. Next to that, we've got our doorbell input. Now this input is a stereo input in a 3.5 millimeter fashion um, used to connect for doorbell devices uh, like the uh, like the G1 and SC100. Though you know other devices could absolutely use this as well. Now moving to the right of that, we've got our analog RCA inputs, right? So you will see four pairs of those. So that's four stereo inputs. Now these can be broken up into eight mono inputs or any combination in between. Again, very flexible. Now moving to the outputs, here's our eight speaker outputs. Now I don't say zones because zones can technically be created based upon your needs again that that's that s1616 flexibility that we retained when building this new product as dealers really like that uh, ability so you can you know create a zone uh, and it could have one of these two of these three of these all eight doesn't matter a zone can be made up of any 
of the combination of outputs that a chassis has. And that's, again, more towards the flexibility that we are trying to achieve with this platform. Each of these outputs can be configured as a left, a right, or a mono. Now, over here, we have our preamp outputs, right? So we've got four pair, or, yeah, four individual or two pairs. Again, they could be broken up either way. So each one of these uh, can be set as a left, a right, a mono, or a sub. And yes, you can, when you're creating or defining your zones, you can have uh, one, two, or more of these preamps uh, combined with speaker outputs uh, for sure. And next to that, oh, well, uh, each of these does have a built-in DSP, right? So we have we have that uh, with the five band EQ and lip sync correction on all of these outputs. And next to that, we've got our trigger outputs. We have three 12 volt triggers, and uh, these are set by uh, basically event mapping uh, for whatever you might need them for. So when a zone or a number of zones turned on, uh, trigger this on, which could you know trigger something else in the system. So pretty flexible and pretty universal in need. And last but not least is the card. So that's the card. That one is pre-installed. And when you want to use the uh, audio over, over IP, you would remove that card and insert the NAC, uh, network audio card. Now moving on to the AMP EXT, you'll notice that this is a lot of the same uh, on the output section. This actually is the same output section. So same um, with the color LEDs on the output side, we have eight, again, speaker outputs. Now this chassis, when you add it, will add up to eight additional zones, uh, depending on how you configure the zones uh, and how many outputs it uses. Uh, same specs for the, for the uh, preamp outputs, still has that DSP and retains that five band EQ and the lip sync correction. And we've got another three system or zone triggers to use. Again, this does not have a card, it has no inputs on it. So this is, uh, has the, the, the Dante, the audio over IP built into it. So it is uh, not a card base, you just, uh, you just plug that single Cat5 cable in for control and to stream the audio out. Next, we've got the, the pre-MSI, this is that preamp chassis. So if we take a look at this, again, it retains those same LEDs, but uh, on the input section, we've got a little bit more here. So we've got three coax inputs and three optical inputs, right? So those are all unique. Those are six individual unique inputs to the system. Then over on the analog RCA side, we've got eight stereo RCAs. Now, just like the MTX chassis, these can be broken up into mono inputs as well, up to, again, 16. So, and any variant uh, in between. So between eight stereo and 16 mono, uh, the choice is yours, how you break and use those up. There is another uh, doorbell input on this, just like you saw on the MTX, and it's over to the right there. Again, that's a 3.5 millimeter connection. And on the output side, we have 12 outputs, uh, preamp, that can be uh, set up as a left, a right, a mono, or a sub. So you can define this, the zones out up to a 12 uh, zone system on the output. These do also have a, a DSP uh, and 5 NIQ and lip sync correction on these outputs as well, just like the other chassis. Three zone triggers, uh, same as the other ones, 12 volt outputs configurable in our software. And just like the MTX chassis, this chassis also comes with the RJ45 card pre-installed for single chassis operation. And again, this is card based. Uh, so if you want that audio over IP, you can re, re, uh, replace this card with our NAC, uh, network audio card, and get that functionality. And again, one of the nice things is you can grow. So you can start single chassis, then move your way up to audio over IP when required. Here's a closer look at uh, our pre-SSI, our local audio source box. Again, uh, fantastic to use behind a, a TV. But don't just think of it as that solution, right? Again, you can have uh, maybe one extra source that you don't have. Instead of getting a whole nother chassis, you could just get this box. You can locate these at the rack if you want. You can look at these basically anywhere that they make sense for you. So if we take a look at the inputs. You, you do see three. You do see an optical, a coaxial, and an RCA input. However, this is a single audio input. So 
you would pick the connection that you want. It is, is one connection, one source input, and then you use the select switch on the left to select which one uh, you are going to be using, either, either the optical or the coax or the analog. Now, to the right of that is the, the, the LAN, the RJ45, right? Now, this is does require that, but it does also power the unit via PoE, so it can be used uh, with a one cable installation. Now you can also, if you didn't have PoE, you can power it with the five volt uh, DC input over here to the right. And this is a, a closer look at the uh, the NAC card, the uh, network audio card. Not too much uh, to note here besides it's one connection for ethernet, but there is a little pinhole to the right of that if you did need to uh, to reset that network connection. Okay, now we're going to get into some design examples. This is uh, this gets into some fun stuff. So let's start with a single chassis system. Now this this is a solution that is shipping today and has been shipping for uh, over a month, I believe. So this is an MTX, and this will be a, a sample standard system that you might see. Right, and you can see that even though you know, we have a subwoofer here that that could be part of any of those other zones. We have uh, using a preamp output for a specific zone six for the landscape. Um, and the great thing is this is fine as it is, and I can configure this up to 12 zones if I had everything running in mono. And again, anything in between, I could have, uh, you know, we could take stereo inputs from the sources. And even though I have a one mono output, you know, maybe I have a bathroom speaker, a uh, single speaker, right, uh, that I'm only using one channel on, It'll take it internally into the unit. It'll take a stereo source and it'll it actually sums it sums the stereo out to the to the mono output. So it's really blended or some stereo. But uh, the great thing is if you have one source playing across different zone configurations, uh, one output stereo or uh, one output mono, two output stereo, uh, there's no problem with sending with sending that source to both at the same time. Now, as the system grows, right, you can now replace that card with the audio over IP uh, enabled card, the NAC. And now you have to add outputs. You could just add another box. So that EXT, AMP EXT box will allow you to add up to eight zones more. Um, and again, that will depend on how you break up the zones and how you define the, the outputs per that box. And you could keep uh, daisy chaining those, those boxes. And that's uh, you know where you get the flexibility uh, from. Now, I, that in the last example, I needed more outputs. I simply added an output box. Well, what if I needed both more inputs and more outputs? Well, fine. I can just add another MTX box. Now, unlike any of our previous chassis before, when you add another chassis, it adds more sources. So if you had uh, previous uh, an S86 and you added another S86. You just added outputs. You didn't add any more source inputs. That's not the case here. And when we're doing this, we're actually adding those sources as unique sources and each of those sources available to each chassis. So the sources connected to chassis one are available to all the connected devices on chassis two and vice versa. And that could be really helpful, especially when you have a larger house, a uh, distributed house. Now, in this case, I have uh, on the top an, an MTX unit. And what if um, I wanted to use a pre MSI as well? What if I had a lot more sources or just needed those preamp outputs? Well, I can mix and match as I choose. So, in this case, I have an MTX and a, a pre MSI unit connected. Now, just like the, the other devices, when you add these, again, the sources from one are seen on the other and vice versa. So it becomes one big connected system, even though they may or may not be connected in the same equipment space. Now, here's an example of a couple of uses for that local audio source, right? So as long as the local audio source is connected to that same network as the other boxes, you're able to add that as an additional source to that audio over IP uh, products, right? So a turntable would that wouldn't do too good if it was located at the rack. Um, and again, behind a TV is, is a pretty common 
uh, scenario. So uh, a lot of these scenarios, the local audio source box, uh, again, once connected to the network, will fill those needs and send that audio back right to any zone that can see it. Now, moving to the next one, the pre-MSI can be used in a single chassis fashion, right? And when used in this fashion, um, you could go up to 23 input sources if they were all mono, and you can go up to a 12 zone output, again, if they were all mono, uh, but you could break those up into uh, different zones depending on what your needs are for that particular project. So you can start by using this chassis without any other audio over IP products or any additional cards. But as the system grows, or maybe it's grown out of the, the, the gate, you can see with that audio uh, networking card, you can use any of the other products with this chassis. So in his case, we needed more outputs. Sure, I can use uh, the audio extender and have some amplified outputs, and now I have some preamp outputs. I have preamp outputs on both chassis. I can use in any form or fashion that I wish. Um, All right, thanks, Larry. We go through a thing quick. Uh... Is it, you know, it, you could use just because we showed you those. There's more examples too. So uh, we only went up to two chassis, but uh, you, that's certainly not the limit here. Take it away, Jeff. Right. All right, so just a quick, uh, just give you information for ordering real quick, uh, part numbers. So for pricing, uh, please reach out to your local RSM for pricing. Um, they will be happy to share that with you. Uh, but you can see here the part numbers, take a snapshot of this. And we, we haven't talked about is the IP AMP bundle. This is a bundled kit that includes a couple of different things. It includes the multi-zone audio matrix. It includes the multi-zone audio extender and the network card and it comes at a bit of a, a, a price discount if you were to buy all three separately so it gives you the functionality that you would expect from uh, an s1616 today so that you can have it in one bundle and uh, it ships out as, as one well, doesn't ship it's going to ship in separate boxes but it's going to it's, it's one part number that you'll need to order so uh, making it easier for you guys to, to get those orders placed so the next thing we're going to look at is the faqs i'm going to let larry go through those again as well uh, so larry um, go ahead and take it away. These are questions that we've, that we've gotten from some different, uh, different sources. These are actual questions that we've gotten. So, uh, hopefully you'll have, you'll have more and, and, and a lot of your questions can be answered here by, by this in the next couple of slides. Absolutely. And then we'll take, <clears throat> after we go through these, uh, uh, FAQs, we'll take your questions and we'll get those answered. So first question is, of course, well, how big of a system can I design? So. Uh, basically, we, uh, we say that you can go with a 32 by 32 configuration without any special needs, right? The only, uh, the only caveat is if you need to go bigger, uh, we actually can go bigger, but that does require some additional network setup. Now, that will be covered in the technical uh, webinar that's going to be towards the end of this month. And uh, we'll also have that document documented for the, uh, for the integration note when, uh, when these uh, rest of the products ship. The next one is what if I have a, a system that has a current S86A or you know, even an S1616A? So you can absolutely use these in the same system as those other uh, older products. Um, however, you know, since they are uh, older, they do not have the same functionality, right? So you can't then stream an F from an S86 into uh, an MTX. So you, you, they will operate in the same system, though they are two they would be at that point two different systems. How many pre SSI units can I connect? Well, how many can you install? I guess that's the question. <laughs> there really is no practical uh, limitation besides our um, rough 32 by 32 uh, uh, system size, right? So that's basically where you're at. Uh, can these be used with an SC or G1 controller? Absolutely. Uh, the controllers you can use on with these are the SC controllers, that's the 2, the 10, the 1, or the 100. Uh, and the next question is, when used with a G1 controller or an SC100 controller, what about the, uh, the limitations? So since this is an Elan product, uh, there are no, uh, the, the same limitations for zones would apply um, as it were for an SC2 or 10. Are there any speaker curves built in? Absolutely. We have six speaker speaker curves built in. Uh, these are genre-based curves. And again, you are 
able to to create your own uh, curve for each room if you want. We got one more page. Does Dante require any special networking infrastructure? Uh, it does not require any special networking infrastructure. However, we do need gigabit switches, uh, but that's pretty much a given uh, in most jobs that I've, I've seen. Um, <clears throat> other than that, the only other caveat that we've seen so far is uh, some gigabit switches that may uh, have a green ethernet. Uh, if you have that, you have to turn it off, uh, but that, that's, that's about it. Uh, it doesn't require a dedicated network. Um, no, it does not require a dedicated network infrastructure. Uh, like our video over IP is a separate infrastructure. Um, we utilize Dante so it could be mixed in the same environment. Um, can Alani amplifiers be used with other Dante enabled devices? I, you know, we get this all the time. Uh, now, the way we utilize Dante uh, was as basically a transmission medium. So we use Dante because uh, it's proven, it's reliable. It's easy. It allows us to um, to use these in your current networking infrastructure. That's why we used uh, Dante. But the endpoints, uh, we do a lot of things that actually Dante doesn't do. It doesn't do any of that summing of mono and stereo. All the zone stuff is around our proprietary DSPs. So those have no way of actually talking outside to other Dante devices or vice versa. So no, uh, we cannot actually talk to other Dante devices. We are using Dante. Uh, in its pure form as a uh, transmission protocol. What is the maximum number of non Dante enabled amplifiers or preamplifiers that can be used in the system? There is actually, the, besides the limitation of, uh, you know, either 32 by 32, or when we get to the larger systems, would be would max out at 64 zones uh, total. And can Dante operate over a Wi Fi network? So part of the way, uh, reason that Dante is so reliable and has no compression or uh, near zero latency is because it runs on a wired network. So they themselves do not support a Wi-Fi network. So uh, inherently then we cannot either. And is that it for the FAQs? Leave. Sorry, I was muted. that's it, it for the FAQs. Um, we do have quite a, quite a few number of questions that we're gonna we're going to get to. Um, so let's let's start with the questions here. Um, all right. So the first question I have is the power rating. Is that all channels driven? And the answer to that one is yes, it is. That's all channels driven. Um, like an audio source module, is there going to be an audio preamp module, preamp out? Uh, so yeah, Larry and I have talked about that. That's something that we would like to see. Uh, come come uh, to be something that would allow you to deliver audio over the Dante network to a remote location using using that. So that's a good question. Um, next question is, if you add the Dante card, is all of the IP control still available? Thus, the Dante card is really just a network card that is Dante enabled. Uh, and that is correct. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, that's a good question. But yeah, that is uh, true. So the Dante card is actually two things in one. It's the IP module for control and the Dante side. And actually, when you and I'll cover this in the technical uh, webinar. But when you when you're using the Dante, it actually each box has two networking addresses: one for the IP control and one for the the Dante side. Very, There's a switch internal, so you don't, you don't have to you don't have to connect two cables. It's still just one cable. Right. Um, okay, so next question on the MTX eight channel, can the doorbell input be used as a ninth analog input? Absolutely. As Larry said, that's just another input. We call it doorbell just because that's typically what will get connected on that 3.5 millimeter connector, but it's just another input. It can be configured just like any other of the inputs on the chassis. All right, so the next question, can you use the preamp audio matrix for multiple preamp outputs in different parts of the project? Let's see, if you want to take I, that one? Yeah, absolutely. So if I understand correctly, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think it's saying, can I, can I use one of those preamp outputs connected or linked to a zone in another chassis? So. Uh, maybe he's got a, um, a M MTX and you've got two speakers on that. Can I use the preamp to assign one of those 
to be a sub for speakers on a different chassis? And if that is the case, the answer is yes. You can do that. You can mix and match right. uh, zones across. All right, so the next question um, is the digital format compa compatibility. Is it two-channel PCM only? Great question. Yes. So on the input section, on the digital inputs, those are uh, two-channel PCM inputs. There isn't a Dolby Dynamix in, in, in those inputs. So I'm not sure if this is a question or a statement I'm trying to say. In each diagram, all of the lawn equipment is plugged into a standard Ethernet switch. That is correct. And then including the SC100, which is only showing the doorbell connection. So we didn't show the wired, the, the network connections for everything, just how the two chassis might be connected over the network. Of course, everything is going to be on the same network. I think that I hope that answers the question. And uh, um, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Larry. What? Oh, no, no, just concurring. That's correct. All right. So how are the stream inputs configured, unicast or multicast? <laughs> Have you had any issues with shared sources sent over multicast affecting the network? That's a great question, Larry. I'll let you take that one. Uh, it's a very, very detailed question. I could probably talk for half an hour about that one question alone. But I will spare you all. And again, we actually do cover that very question in the technical webinar. But uh, what it is, is we are actually using uh, unicast out of the box and uh, up to our 32 by 32. When we get to the advanced, uh, when we need to go up to 64, we have the uh, a multicast option that does require the, uh, the extra the networking uh, uh, limitations uh, and, and configuration. So uh, right. basically unicast out of the box, uh, no, no real settings in the network. Multicast, we have the ability to do that, uh, which does require um, additional settings. Perfect. All right, so we have a couple more questions. If anybody has any more, get them in now. <laughs> um, one question, can I, patch it, uh, can I patch devices directly together without a switch to get onto communications? Um, the answer to that is, is no, you need a switch in between because we have no way to, to connect the two devices and have them talk to each other in a meaningful way. Um, and then the last question that we have, uh, and I think we've answered it, but is, um, is the 3.5 millimeter mono, actually a couple more questions after this, is the 3.5 millimeter mono or stereo? Um, that is a stereo input on all the chassis. Um, can you use multiple preamp audio matrix in different equipment racks in the house? Um, that was one of the examples, and absolutely you can, as long as you have uh, the Dante card installed in both of them. You can have them be in, in different different parts of the house or different buildings, in fact, as long as they're part of the same network. Uh, you know, a, a great example might be, you know, a guest house, uh, right? So you've got two different buildings and you put the you put the two chassis each in the same in, in different buildings, but they're on the same network and all of the sources, it looks like one system to to a lawn. So we can route any of the audio to any of the sources or to any of the chassis from any of the sources. Uh, we can we can group the zones just like we normally would. So it's it's basically becomes one one system. If we have any more here, um, can you use a Wi-Fi extender to turn Wi-Fi signal to LAN to connect Dante wirelessly? Um, no, Dante does not work uh, on a wireless network. It has to be wired for it to work, and that's just the way you know uh, the way it's the way it's architected. So. Um, no Wi-Fi at this point. Maybe, maybe some point in the future, Dante uh, Audinate will, will create something, but at this point, that's that's all that we have available to us. Um, let's see, I'll let, I'll let you take this one, Larry. So I have a project that will require five autonomic streamers. Where will AirPlay, where we will AirPlay to each streamer at the same time? Any issues? Question mark. Ah, so if you if you have uh, five of these uh, autonomic devices or any streamer uh, connected, um, that should not be a problem because we're you know these boxes are just taking the output from from the autonomics box. Uh, even though you might be air playing it, um, since we're you know the switching is done you know in unicast, that shouldn't be a, uh, be an issue. All right, a few more questions came in. Um, okay, where am I? Let's see here. Actually, no, that's all the questions we have. I thought uh, it scrolled up. So we have no more questions. Well, if anybody has any more questions, um, I think we will we'll close this out for today. Um, 
So again, don't forget to um, uh, don't forget to. It looks like somebody has a question in the chat window. I just got a message. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat window. I didn't have that open again. I was just looking at the. We've only been monitoring uh, the uh, the Q and A window. Oh, we did get a couple more questions here. So. The new 4K Apple TV only has an HDMI output. How does Elon have or plan anything on having an HDMI audio tear-off? Um, so not with the current, the current devices now. The, the way we would expect this to get used is to run the Apple TV through the, the TV's input and then run the audio output from the TV into the uh, pre-SSI as a way to, to, to make that happen. And one other alternative, uh, uh, Zantech does actually make it an audio breakout uh, box that you could use as well, or or any breakout box for that matter. Can we make a full 5.1, 7.1, or 9.1 home theater or full Atmos home theater with these devices? Ah, so right. it, it, yeah, it is not a uh, an AVR per se. So. Uh, each each channel can be uh, uh, we have the, DS, the DSP will will determine left, right, mono or sub, but we don't. It's not a you know it doesn't decode uh, Dolby. And actually, you would technically need an HDMI connection to get most of those audio formats. Those a lot of those only come over an HDMI line, so um, it cannot uh, it cannot process those. So it is it is still your typical multi room um, type of a setup. Not a replacement for an AVR. It's a great question, though. So, question: Can you use it if you have a wireless bridged network? I, um, Larry, I'll let you take that one. As far as wireless goes, same same issue we have. Um, no, no wireless. Uh, Dante does not travel over a wireless network. Right, and the reason why is you know there is uh, inherent latency uh, over wireless networks uh, versus wired. That you might not, uh, you know, n notice if it wasn't audio. I mean, our ears can detect, you know, a lot of a lot of things when it comes to audio. Uh, so even if you were doing that, you would you would still probably have you would probably run into issues if you tried it uh, with latency or clocking. Okay. So next question: Is there any plan for a single zone amplifier for single remote location? Yes, uh, that is something that we have in in, uh, in the works in terms of uh, our planning. We'd like to see maybe a two-channel lamp that can be placed somewhere remotely and you can deliver all the uh, different uh, sources from anywhere to that little remote amplifier or any local sources that might be connected to that as well. Um, okay, so next question, uh, how about a network bridge to a boathouse? Uh, will Dante work? Again, as long as all part of the same network, the, two, you know, the networks are connected, <clears throat> any, anything is possible. Uh, between buildings. So whether it's a boathouse or a detached garage or a guest house or a pool house, um, as long as they're all on the same network, we can deliver the audio from any of the any of the system, any of the system to that to that chassis. All right, looks like I don't have any more questions coming in. Um, so just the last little bit, just make sure that you contact your local RTS for, for these great questions. They will be able to answer these questions and many, many more for you. Um, they are a great resource for helping with system design. Um, they can make you, uh, they can help you make systems that are, you know, efficient and make the, the best use of the equipment that we have. Uh, don't forget about the technical webinar that Larry will be doing later this month. He uh, will be sending out an email on that. Um, Pre-orders, we are gonna start pre-orders uh, next week. So that's gonna be um, uh, Monday of next week, we'll start pre-orders. And if you want to go to the portal, these devices are all visible on the portal. We can't take any orders for them yet, but they're all there on the portal with, with, uh, with pricing and specs and all, all that good stuff. And look for these to be shipping at the end of June. That's when we're going to be able to ship these out to you guys and, and start uh, uh, putting these in some, some great projects. And we're really excited again about these amps. We're excited to see what you guys can do out there. And, and uh, we expect some pretty creative stuff. Uh, we, always, we always do get to see that from you guys. So it's really good. Appreciate it very much. And um, if there are no more questions, it doesn't think they are, I will uh, we'll sign off now and um, happy selling. And thank you, uh, all of you, for your time. Appreciate it.